Do you ever find yourself holed up in your windowless bomb shelter of a basement, playing your rumbling Game Boy games, when suddenly you need to replace the AAA battery? You've already taken the AAAs from the TV remote. Your old digital camera that used them got thrown away ages ago. Even your mom's vibrator uses USB-C lithium rechargeables these days. What do you do? Are you going to do the unthinkable and leave the house just for batteries? Well, I'm on a mission to help you never interact with human beings face-to-face -face ever again, and the start to that is to power these games with the juice already in your Game Boy. I've come up with a few potential methods to accomplish this, and it's time to test them out and see if we can't get vibration back in the palm of your hands forevermore. But before we begin, hit that subscribe button, or else I'll come to your house and make you have a conversation with me face-to-face. It's a fate worse than death. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Are you all ready for this? What I'm going to do today is open up this missile command and try and get the uh the rumble working without this battery here. I mean, I could do that with this Pokemon Pinball here, but frankly, Pokemon Pinball is a little bit too expensive for my tastes. The lie detector determined that's a lie. <laughs> now, I've got two different methods I can do. One of them is going to be taking the power directly off of one of the capacitors. The other is going to be using this board right here. This is a step-down converter, so this is going to allow us to take 3.3 volts off of our main outer lines, and if, if you've watched my previous video on adding a light into your Pokemon games, then you know roughly what I'm talking about with those lines. Otherwise, there's power going through the two outer posts of these teeth right here. Whatever you want to call them, I don't care anymore. We're going to do a couple of things. Just follow along. Keep up. I'm not good at Missile Command, but you can clearly see the, uh, the motor working there, hopefully. And that has the battery in it currently. Alright, first thing we're going to do is grab our game bit. Our 3.8 game bit. Now this should just lift right off. Ba-boom. There we go. And now, I believe what we can do is actually grab power directly off of this C5 here. So let's start off by trying to do that. Now, I'm going to take this gray solid core wire and just attach that directly between C5 positive. I don't know if it's actually positive. I'm going to be going from the right side here because I've seen that work online before and I don't really know why. You know, realistically I should, but I, I don't. I guess first things first, we should actually test to see if that's putting off the right amount of power that we want. Now, I'm going to grab my digital multimeter here and... Oh, I'm not sure if that battery light there means that it's running low on battery, because I, I did leave this on at some point, but it seems to be working for right now, so that's good enough for me. So we want to test our AV. I've got that in there. Let's turn it on. Ba boom Okay, so I'm getting about 5 volts there, so I really don't want to uh, actually use that directly, but it does seem kind of nice, knowing that we do have those 5 volts there. Um, of course, my step-down converter is working off of 3, so I don't actually know how I feel about that. What happens if we actually go off of here? Does that do anything? I'm able to tell. Is this still on? Yeah, it seems to be. Got 5 volts. Got a diode there. I don't actually know what any of these parts do. I mean, that's an MBC5. MBC5. I'm going to turn this off for the time being. And we're going to just track where our VDD goes. Okay, so it looks like just barely accessible there. I can go off that one for VDD and uh, double check that. Let's see if that's the case. We got a dead battery. Toss out that one, replace it with a brand new one. Ah! I really need to find a way of not having an extra battery in this, because the amount of batteries I go through with this thing is just ridiculous. It, it's like a Game Gear in how many batteries it takes. I mean, it only takes one battery per time, but every time I go to use it, I need a new battery in there, because I always leave it on by accident. 
Okay, so as we can see, VDD1 goes to these four contacts here. And if we flip this over and find those four there, we can see, oh, it goes up here to these four. And also goes over and around to these two. Now those two, if we look for them on the other side of the board, are going to be these two right here, right above this chip. And I believe that this is actually very similar to the board for Pokemon Pinball, but we can open that up in a minute and find out. So we can now test our DC voltage while it's on. All right, let's turn the volume off because I don't want to listen to that the whole time. And we're going for positive on the VDD and to the negative. Okay, we're getting about 4.88, which is actually the same as what we're getting here, isn't it? 4.88. It doesn't really matter which section we go from. We're going to get about the same. I'm still going to use my step-down converter because I feel like that's going to be a better option, but I am going to go off of that C5 there regardless. I feel like that's the best option. I think it's the best option, at least. Weird that it's giving me 4.88 regardless here, because I was really planning on it being 3.3 like it always is, but nope, 4.88. So, uh, yeah, let's give this a try. This time... Oh, ho, ho, turning that off. Congratulations! 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 Turn my soldering iron on. Today's tip, spike. I'm working at 300 degrees Celsius today because I feel like it. It'd actually be kind of cool to put Pokemon Pinball in this, I think. You know, give it a little bit of uh, transparency. Besides, my Pokemon Pinball is all messed up anyway. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got my wire here. This is 30 gauge solid core. I don't know if it's better to use solid core or twisted for this. I'm no wire expert. Here's where I keep assorted lengths of wire. Whoa, let me show you some of the different lengths of wire I used. So let's just cut off a little bit of this. You know what? I could use my flush cutters, but I'm not going to because I've got these sick toenail clippers. And that was a mistake. Oh, you see how that just came unraveled? Give me an instant replay on that. Sick toenail clippers. It's a good instant replay. Oh, what have I done with my life? This is never going to wind back onto the spool properly again. Uh, uh. So we got ourselves a little bit of this solid core. Yeah, it looks pretty solid to me. If you want to buy one of these, I grabbed this from AliExpress, I'll leave a link down below for it. One thing I do like about it, this seems to have an LED in it, so fingers crossed that that works. Just gonna stick it down onto here. I don't care. Good enough for me. Okay, let's get these attached and uh, test it out. That looks like it's in the right place, I'd say. Now I'm gonna put this ground through this hole. We're gonna have it meet up so that's like roughly at the same spot. Roughly. I'm gonna leave a little bit extra on there, just like that. See, leaving a little bit of overhang. Got some room to work in case I can't strip it properly the first time. Because sometimes I just can't strip it properly the first time. It's okay, because I always anticipate failure. Let me just get this soldered onto here. Okay, let's see if it's stuck. It did not. I messed that up. Messed that up something fierce. Okay, where are my tweezers at? Love these tweezers. So useful. Okay, I feel like this is not going to hard enough now. This is where I give up on this board and just go grab another. Failing is easy when you're used to it. I'm just grabbing a second one. I don't I don't care anymore. Ooh, red light. Roxanne! Okay, and we're still getting sound out through it. Now let's see what kind of voltage we are getting here. That brings us down to 3.4. 
I'm numerically illiterate. But it's lower than it was, so that's something at least. I guess that's what I get for trying to feed too much power into this in the first place. But nonetheless, I think this should still be an improvement. So I'm going to get this wired in and see what happens. A few moments later. Oh, crap. Did I do that wrong? The entire time? Yep! I put the input on the output and the output on the input. I'll explain why that didn't work. After wiring it again, it's time to test it. Oh, that's perfect. 1.5. Exactly what we want. Thing is, though, I don't think this will actually fit in here. Oh, yes it will. Oh, it's hard to get that on there. Look at that big ball of solder, though. Maybe if I flux it up a bit. Flux solves everything. You know what? I'll take this out of here. Now it's full of flux, which is fine. It's no clean flux. It's supposed to be fine, right? I wonder if it connects the fuse, because if I can just connect that fuse there, F1, everything will be hunky-dory. Okay, we got our positive connection. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. This is the part where the wire breaks. Okay, this is one thing I hate about using solid core, is that the end just broke off of this, which is not ideal in any way, shape, or form. No, I'm going to abandon solid core wire entirely. I'm tired of this. I'm going to use some straight up, like, 18 gauge. Like, look how thick this is compared to this wire down here. It's totally unnecessary. I don't even think it's a great idea. But I'm going to do it anyway, because I'm just so tired of dealing with solid core that breaks. So, this gets done now. Okay, there. It's in. Now we just need to put it back in the case, and we're good. Okay, now we need to just answer two questions. One, does it work? And two, does it catch on fire? If we're okay on both of those, then I can call this a success, and I can never worry about this ever again. Okay. Okay, so we've got that going on. Hmm, so the graphics are messed up. This is still playable, funny enough. Okay, well that's a thing. If I now go and just desolder all of these, I wonder if it'll start working again. I'm gonna guess it probably does. Okay, so we've got a booting. Oh, yep, yeah, it works fine now. Yeah, okay, so it works still. Okay, so I couldn't get it working with that. When we did the out to in, in the opposite direction, it seemed to work fine, which makes me wonder if we can't just do that again, because I liked having a little light in there. That was kind of neat. Uh, however, I do kind of want to try this C5 directly to directly to the positive there. Let's see if we can't get that working. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take this little bit of wire that I have here. I'm not even going to cut any new wire. Good enough. Now that it's there, I'm actually just going to tape it down. I'm tired of these things coming up. I just want to test them. Okay, good enough. Let's see if that works. It's booting. Oh! Okay. Let's see if we get any actual vibration out of it. Whoa. Yeah, we do. So yeah, uh, as it turns out, this is functional. I honestly wouldn't have guessed that. I thought our previous method would have worked better, but no, no, this is, this is it. As it turns out, if you just connect that C5 there up to your fuse, bada bing bada boom, you're good to go. Now, I don't know if this is actually good for the game itself. This may cause some issues later on, but you know, when comparing it to the other method we had of going through one of these, I'd say this is... This is much more of a success. So yeah, I mean, if you want to do this and have a game that doesn't require a battery in order to rumble, just connect your C5 to your fuse. And let's just make sure that that is the same on here.
because I know that Pokemon Pinball uses a slightly different board because it has batteries, or a battery for saves. It looks like on Pokemon Pinball it's labeled as C6, but it should still work properly. Yeah, because these are the same same things. It's just the second revision of the board versus the first revision. So, yeah, theoretically you should be able to easily do that. And you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's give it a little test. Test a Rooney here. First things first, does it boot up? Looks like it will. Oh, check that out. We crashed it, and it's just rolling. So, that's a maybe. It's not the best method of doing it, for sure. They do use these for a reason, you know? That is very interesting, though. All right, I'm going to come back in part two. All right, we're back a few weeks later. I've told myself that I'm going to stop being a lazy ass about making videos, and I'm going to try just doing this part again using this potentiometer and see if I can't find myself a good resistance to use. Because I think a resistor could work in this situation. But let's find out. Okay, so we're currently at about 500 ohms. All right, and I am getting no rumble here. Yeah, zero rumble. I don't know how many times I've got to spin this. Okay, cool. We've got no resistance now. Let's ensure that this actually does work. I don't think it's going to work. Yep, this ain't working. With no resistance on the potentiometer, and no freezing in the game, one can only assume that I had failed to solder it in properly. So it's time to try again. Perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna turn this all the way up, and we'll go down from there. 985, I think that's close enough, I don't think. 15 ohms is going to make that big a difference. Then again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, I get nothing there. So we can move down from that point. 287. Nothing. Two or three ohms. One twist at a time. I'm getting a little bit. If I was better at this game, this would be much easier to test. You know what else would make it easier to test? Using the rumble test on the options screen. Oh. Oh, I can test it that way. So with just a little bit of resistance, so I'm able to get it, but it's not very strong, as you can see. What are we at now for resistance? Because we want one. Two or one. Let's give that a shot and see if it freezes. It's not even making a full rotation right now, and it's at one ohm. So that's not ideal. Yeah, even just like this, it's like barely working now. Okay, I'm getting much stronger vibration off of AA now. So, I guess the system's just having a hard time actually pulling enough power for Pokemon Pinball here. Out of options and feeling defeated, let's see if the step-down converter can come through and save the day. Okay, let's see if this works now. Okay, the game refuses to even boot like this. It's kind of too bad. And so, this thing does not work for Pokemon Pinball at all. But, you know, if you do have a game that doesn't use too much power, you might be able to get away doing this little method. Alternatively, I have actually seen people online replace, replace the motor with an LED that lights up when it would normally rumble, and that seems to work fine. So, you know, if you want to try that, give it a, give it a shot, I guess. I don't know. Have you attempted this mod before? Have you gotten it to actually work? Either way, leave a comment down below letting me know what happened and how you did it. Because I would really like to find a solution to this. I spent far too long on this video to not have an actual solution to battery-free rumble. And I am tired of using all my AAAs on Pokemon Pinball. I'd also like to quickly apologize for not uploading more. I'm going to remedy that. Very soon, I have some very interesting projects coming up, I think. 
So, smash that subscribe button! Or whatever people are saying these days. I don't know. Tanner does mods, Tanner does mods. This is the ending theme of Tanner does mods. Please leave a comment and subscribe and share with your friends and come back again next time.